Well, hello my lovelies, my sweet peeps, and my little pretties. How much I love you. Look who I have here. My friend in the back. That's why I'm sitting here. This is episode 10, part 10 of my story. And I'm wearing the necklace my mama gave me for my birthday. I don't know if you can read it, but you could try. I'm not gonna tell you what it says, but my mama knows. She's an angel. Anyway, this is part 10 of my story that I'm sharing with you because I love you so much and I've been so very busy and I do have court on Monday. So I'm trying to fit this in so I won't be able to show you any photographs this week, okay? But I am going to read you about part 10 and keep you up to date and try to give you some more details about my life after I left the apartment and my twin sister was going with my ex-boyfriend, Raul, Cuban guy. Uh, you know, but we're all kids and nobody's ever going to come between me and my twin sister. So let's just get that straight right now. We've been best friends our whole life. And not even any Scientology is going to take my twin sister away from me. So make sure you understand this. Twins are inseparable especially when they're like us and they're best friends, okay? And um, even though the story is a little bit difficult to understand because we are twins, and uh, I'm sure if she told her side of the story, uh, I wouldn't be looking all that hot, and I'm not going to get into anything personal about her because that's her own story to tell, not mine. Like I said, I'm telling my story. So um, I told you I got a job at Capitol Records, right? And I was living in my Chevy Vega, my hatchback Chevy Vega. And I wore the same outfit for like two weeks. By the time the end of the second week, the other people that I worked with were starting to notice, hey, don't you have any other clothes? I mean, why do you wear the same outfit every day? Hey, would you mind? I'm doing a video. You hear this? They get so jealous. Hey. Hold on. Okay, they're right up there. So anyways, oh, maybe you can see me better now. I don't know, the lighting is a little bit weird. Um, anyway, I was working at Capitol Records, and the guy, one of the, the head honchos would always be, somehow or another, attracted to me. And they would come down to my desk and ask me, I smoked at the time, I don't smoke anymore, but I did smoke at that time. And he'd always smoke a cigarette off of me and joke around with me and stuff. He was really super nice. But I ended up quitting there because my immediate boss that I had kept on making kind of like, you know, advances at me and stuff like that. Not to put him down or anything. Men will be men. And uh, it was up to me to put him in his place as usual. So I did. And I quit. So um, I got a job working... At, I met a bunch of people at Capitol Records, like Tom Petty, uh, so many different singers and groups and stuff that I don't even know now. Uh, I think Kiss was there at the time, that Nasty Nathaniel loves Kiss, he would have loved it. I even got some autographs from some of them. I might have to give them Nasty Nathaniel because they're just sitting in a box somewhere. They might be worth something, he might like them. He's my buddy. Um, and anyways, uh, I was going to tell you, I got a job on a soap opera at NBC because my sister, my twin sister, worked there in the office. So they gave me a job on the soap opera. They did an interview with me and looked at me and my face and everything to see if I was good enough to be on the TV screen. And I guess they decided I was, so I got a job on there. It was pretty boring. It was the most boring job I ever had in my life because I wasn't the star of the show. And I had to sit in the dressing room all day until the end of the day, till it was my turn to film something. And it was a blessing, and I was so happy for the experience. But it was dreadful, absolutely dreadful. First of all, if you walk into a producer's office, and you're looking for an interview to get into some other movies and stuff, and they throw a pillow 
down on the ground and drop their drawers in front of you. Either you do what they want you to do and kneel down on that pillow or you walk out like I did. And if you walk out like I did, you're not going to get any parts in the movies. Okay, so there you have it. I, I wasn't famous or popular. I wasn't going to... I'm very pious. I believe in God, and which is what this necklace says, by the way. And I'm not going to give myself up for anything. I'd rather be broke and poor and live in the gutter than, than do something like that. I thought it was so embarrassing for the man that did that to me. And I'm not going to mention his name. But... Um, when I work for attorneys at MGM UA, I heard and saw, I mean, I, I work for an attorney, so I saw the contracts and all the things that the people were requesting from us, and it was just absolutely appalling. The things that they had done and the things that they wanted erased from the records and stuff like that that we could do for them, it was just ridiculous, the stuff they do. And so, like... Now that we have this home, homeless problem, with this homeless population, I wonder where all the movie stars are with all that money and who they're helping. Are they helping anyone? Are they doing anything for anyone? I know Reagan Benson is. Have you subscribed to her channel? That woman is bad to the bone. And I pray for her and bless her, Lord, for doing what she's doing. She just got a homeless lady, a place to live, on our last video, you should go subscribe and tell her Katie Kidman sent you. So anyways, I was working on the soap opera, bored stiff, I wasn't going to get down on the pillow, and I wasn't going to be disrespected by the other actors either, because they're quite rude, they're very stuck up and they don't talk to you in the hallway or in the dressing room, you all have your own dressing rooms, and it's really boring. So I ended up I lived in the Hollywood Hills under the Hollywood sign, like I told you. And we got, my twin sister and I got a bunch of uh, auditions for commercials because I met these two twin friends of mine. They became my best friends and my actual roommates, Lori and Lana Hendricks. They're really super cool girls and they were, they're twins. Lana was my best friend, but she, her and Lori were twins. And we ended up being roommates in Sherman Oaks. And that was a whole nother, those two were a trip. Like we would go down to Merlin McFly's in Marina Del Rey and, you know, like on a Friday night or, or whatever. And if you left Lori behind, the other twin, these two would fight like cats and dogs in front of me. I'd have to separate them. They always wore cowboy boots and they'd kick each other in the ankles and the shins and everything. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hey. You know, calm down. You're not fighting in front of me like that. So anyway, um, like I said, my twin sister started working at NBC in Burbank, which it's not there anymore. Let me see what, what I, else I wrote down here. And um, so I managed to mend my broken heart and move on. I was living in the Hollywood Hills with my stepmom, Dorothy, whom I got along with greatly. She saved me from living in my Vega, my Chevy Vega. I had a room on the top floor of her five-story house. It was fantastic, actually. I loved her. And I had, I could see the Hollywood sign from my window. So it was really rad. And her daughter, Carol, is an interior decorator and she decorated the house. She always threatened to take the furniture from us, but she never did. Because she had to decorate these movie stars' houses, like Rod Stewart, Lily Tomlin, a bunch of people. But I could see the Hollywood sign, like I said, and I had a little black and white cat named Rocky. He used to wait for me to come home, and I would open the mail slot on the door, on the front door, and I'd stick my hand in there when I got home from work and call him, Rocky, Rocky, and he would come running and stick his little paw through the mail slot and we just sit there and play back and forth and just it was really funny because he just keeps sticking it through there trying to to hit my hand or whatever and then he would hide in a little slot next to the stairs and hit me on the legs on the way by and you could play catch with him he would you could throw him a ball and he would throw it back to you with his paw he was the coolest cat so um 
I had that cat when I lived up there, but one time I got home and Rocky was gone and I was asking Dorothy, where's my cat? She said, I let it outside and it never came back. It disappeared. I think the coyotes got it. And I was like, oh, I'm moving. You can't let my cat out and act like it's nothing. That's And then I had to leave my car there because I had to go somewhere. Like, I forget where I went, out of town or something. And when I came back, my Vega, my Chevy Vega, was crushed in the back. My, the hatchback was crushed in and everything. She, she said she forgot to put the emergency brake on and it rolled backwards. But, you know, I was like, dang, that's two things, very serious things at my age. You know, 18, 19 years old, you let my cat go and the coyotes got it. I was traumatized. I mean, not traumatized, but devastated, I must say. And I've never forgotten Rocky, ever. But I did move out. Anyway, my stepsister, Carol Poet, uh, you could look her up online probably. She designed furniture. She decorated like Lily Tomlin's house and all kinds of stuff. She's really, really good. And But I had my 21st birthday in that house in the Hollywood Hills, and she threw a big, huge party for me. I had my own birthday cake with my name on it. It didn't say twins. It had my name. So that was great fun. And then I quit my job at Capitol Records because of unwanted and unsolicited sexual advances and got a job at a law firm while I was working at on that soap opera. And then I was working at MGM, but this was, it's hard to keep everything in order in my life, but MGM comes later on. In the meantime, though, I was working out, living in the Hollywood Hills, um, I met a bunch of different people. I was working out at Jane Fonda's workout, and Madonna used to go there to her to her workout place that she had, Jane Fonda's studio. And she worked out every day right in front of me. So I mean, I I didn't know Madonna. You know, she was brand new back then in the '80s. And I didn't know. I worked at Capitol Records. I saw plenty of Madonnas, and she was quite rude. But um, but I, I didn't have any kind of relationship. Jane Fonda was super nice. She used to talk to me all the time. She actually did the aerobics class. And so I worked out with Jane Fonda um, pretty much every day of the week. And then like we would end up in the dressing room or actually it was a bathroom, but it had like stalls and stuff. And she'd be sitting there talking to me and telling me that she thought she was ugly. And I'm like, you're not ugly, you're beautiful. Don't say you're ugly. But you know what? We had, and she's not ugly. She's beautiful. She's a really rad lady. I love her. Her new show with Lily Tomlin is really cool too. I used to watch that at my sister's house um, or my mom's house when I was staying with them. But um, I really like her. And I met Lily Tomlin one time too. She's kind of, you know, she doesn't like to be around people and she didn't really want to meet anyone. So my niece and I took off and we were like, ah, whatever. We didn't, you know, but she was there at my sister's house, my stepsister's house in Beverly Hills, and they were hanging out. But, um, you know, I met people like all kinds of different people. When I worked in MGM, I'll tell you about that later. But, um, so my niece actually wanted to meet Madonna because her and all her, she went to Beverly Hills High School. She wanted to meet Madonna, so... I said, oh, well, come over there, and we leave at, like, 6.30, 7 o'clock, you know, I think we get over there at, like, 5.30, we leave around 7, and um, she walks out with me every day, so if you want to see her, you can just come over there at, you know, 7, 6.30, and you can meet her. So my niece was all excited, she got all dressed up like Madonna with all the bracelets she used to wear up her arm, like, and all her friends, like she had four or five different friends that all got dressed up like Madonna as well. And they're all sitting on the wall outside waiting for Madonna to come out. So I walked out behind Madonna and I go, there she is right there. Because she doesn't look like her. She has her hair in a ponytail, no makeup. She looks, you know, like, I don't know, anybody. And so I was like, that's her. And, you know, just so they would know. 
and they all had like little pictures of her or magazines with her picture on it and they wanted her autograph so they jumped up and said Madonna Madonna oh my god can we have your autograph and Madonna said turned around and said no I don't give little bitches like you my autograph and she walked away and she went and got in a red Ferrari with this guy Floyd Mutrix uh, I think he's a producer or something and took off you know so she I she lost a lot of fans that day and I don't listen to her music my niece never did none of her friends ever did again it was ridiculous what she did they were all crying and very upset about the fact that they got you know treated that way by somebody that should be grateful to her fans like Michael Jackson was so grateful to his his fans but um Anyway, somehow or another, I always ended up attracting the head honchos in the companies I worked for everywhere I went. Even at Capitol Records, MGM, NBC, they loved to call on me because they thought I was cute and clever, they said. All the other girls were so jealous, seriously. They were like, why are you treating her like that and not me? And I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know why they are. I was the shyest one. I met Shirley MacLaine in Beverly Hills one day and she was a fascinating woman. Her eyes, our eyes met, and it was a real blessing. When she looked at me, she just sat there and kept staring at me like she knew me. And to be in her presence was like completely embracing and loving. She's a very kind soul, a very beautiful, kind soul. You could feel it all around her when, you, when you're in her presence. She's one of those people. She really is. I was, she made my day. I was floating on cloud nine like for a week. I was like, oh, I met Shirley McLean and she noticed me. She actually noticed me. She looked at me and acknowledged me and like looked at me like we were sisters. It was unbelievable, really. She's great. And, um, I'll never forget it. Like Goldie Hawn was an absolute sweetheart. And then you had, you know, she would always, Goldie Hawn, I did a movie with her called, um, what was the movie? Moonstruck? Was it? No, that was Cher. Overboard. With Goldie Hawn and her husband, she married while they were doing that movie. He's really cool too, I don't remember his name. But she was so sweet that I never forgot her because she would always go wave at you and hi same thing michael jackson did he'd always look back at you and wave you know it was the cutest thing and she'd always say hi to me one time she even went out of her way to say hi to my sister my twin sister she's just a real sweetheart very compassionate whereas madonna and Cher, they have no compassion at all they can care less about their fans they're like get out of my face anyway also, somehow, some way, I always ended up working for attorneys. So I don't know why that is. Maybe because the uncle that says that that he didn't consider me a member of his family, my uncle Dan, the one that left my dad behind, um, he was an attorney. Maybe it runs in the family. I don't know. But uh, I I ended up working for attorneys downtown L.A. I worked for an attorney at MGM. Um, I met attorneys at NBC, and as a matter of fact, my twin sister ended up breaking up with a Cuban guy that we, uh, we both ended up going out with, but I want him to know that he was not the first one. There was another one named Bo Saylor that I was hanging out with first in Eagle Rock, and I took videos of exactly where I lived in my neighborhood, and I'm going to post them on my channel so you can see where I came from, my house, and the street where I told you that they let go of that, that um, shopping cart and let me fly all the way down the hill in that shopping cart and the concrete wall that I slammed into at the bottom and all the stuff from my childhood. It's amazing. But um, it's a very emotional journey to do something like this, to talk about your life and your, your childhood and, and your, your whole past in your life because I'm not perfect. There's times when, I mean, I don't drink anymore. Alcohol, I haven't had alcohol in years and years. I mean, I had like 30 years, and then when I was married to my last husband, 
I drank beer and stuff with him, but I shouldn't have, and I quit again. But um, that was a mistake, but I'll tell you about that later. But most of my life, I know that my dad was an alcoholic, and it runs in my family, and I did not want to go down that road. And so I've always been cognitive and aware of that. And I, I just do not do drugs, and I don't drink alcohol. And I don't smoke anymore either. But, I mean, I don't judge anybody that does any of those things, you know. It's just that I have an addictive personality, and I can't. So, you know, that's me. Anyway, um, uh, I kind of, like, ended up hanging, hanging out a lot at NBC, like, um, because my sister worked there, and once she broke up with uh, Raul, our Cuban boyfriend, who I'm telling right now, he was not the first one, so he can't wear those stripes anymore, um, because she ended up going out with my first boyfriend too, Bo, but not really going, we were just kids, I mean, not really going out with him, just hanging out with him, but um, anyway, this is chapter, uh, part 10, and where I'm going to let you go here is that my twin sister moved into an apartment across the street or real near NBC Studios, and she met this guy um, at the studio that was much older than her, like by 40 years or something, who was a Jay, who was a producer, and really cool, classy guy. That's another story I'm going to tell you about later, but he was really cool, and I really think they were in love with each other, but I just think the age difference was too much, but I really think he loved her, and um, they were together for years, and she worked at NBC, she met him there, and uh, when I went to her apartment in Beverly Hills, it was really serene and peaceful there it's like she had her whole apartment fixed up really cute her bedroom was really really simple and clean and nice and I remember she had a Bible on her nightstand and her rosary beads on her nightstand and when I walked in there I felt the presence of of God or I don't know what it was about that apartment about that place about her presence about that whole thing that once she broke up with Raul and she let him go, which I thank God she did because he unfortunately continues to this day to be abusive towards women. It's just a fact because I know that my sis other sister is in contact with them and it's like, you know, I mean, it's, you think they grow up and learn to stop being so unloyal and abusive it's just ridiculous but the good thing is that she got away from him and so did I and we were friends again and I was working on a soap opera she got me the interview she was going out with Jay and everything was going really well um, she was still we were still visiting our dad they moved in him and his new wife Lady moved into their new house in Alhambra and wanted to be alone so they got what they wanted and we moved on. I was trying to go to college. I went to UCLA and I went to Santa Monica City College for a while but it was too hard for me to work and go to college. I wanted to be an attorney and I also wanted to be an actress but when I found out the price I had to pay for either one of those things it just seemed like you know I didn't want to spend my whole entire life devoted to doing something like that, talking about other people's uh, legal problems or like, you know, I want, or acting and having to be um, subservient to men. I would rather be the writer, the director, or do something entirely different altogether because I don't want to be involved in people that do things like that. It's nasty to me. So it was very refreshing and and really great to be able to feel that when I walked into her apartment and we uh, we hadn't talked to each other for like two years because of Raul. And so it was very nice to be able to see her 
and get back together. She's a really cool person. All of my sisters are. I'm blessed. God bless me with a great family, even though it's not a perfect story and it's not the same childhood that you might have had, but it's my family. And I wouldn't trade any of them for anybody ever in the whole world. Not my mom, my dad, my sisters, my son, anyone. They're mine, and I love them, and they're always going to be mine. So until next time, leave me a comment. Tell me if you want to know more, because there is much, much more. And I can't wait to tell you. So I hope you have a great week, and until next Sunday, much love, my friends. Subscribe if you haven't already, because the story's only going to get better. Ta-ta.